Hello everyone, my name is Jajit Banerjee. I'm a solutions architect with AWS. Joining me today is Mihir Patel, who is the VP of Cloud Architecture from Apps Associate. And today Mihir is going to talk about the various deployment patterns of EBS on AWS. Apps has done over 150 implementation of Oracle applications on AWS. That's a pretty big number, Mihir. Congratulations. Thank you. So why don't you talk about some of the most common deployment patterns that you see, how customers are deploying Oracle EBS on AWS, and just walk us over the journey of about various customer experience you have witnessed so far. Okay. So let's talk about a typical Oracle eBusiness Suite customer. They might have one app server, one DB server, right, as a standard topology. Small, medium uh, sized customers have this type of a topology. Now, enterprise customers might have more application servers, larger servers, things like that for the database. But a typical topology is a single app server, single DB server, as we've illustrated here. Now, talking about the single application tier and single database tier, right? So, in that case, I believe that there won't be any HA because everything is running on a single application tier and single database tier. In that case, how do you do HA in that scenario? Okay, so let's talk about it from the database first from an HA perspective. Mm -hmm. So, on terrestrial infrastructure, we might have all of the database capacity uh, consolidated into a single database server uh, because of licensing and capacity and those types of things just based on how big of a server we bought. When we move it to AWS, we can take that and split uh, the capacity up into several different uh, servers. So in this case, we have database in AZ1, we can create a st uh, physical standby in, in uh, AZ2, standard Oracle, data guard, nothing, nothing fancy. Uh, we design that just as we would on-prem with our standard uh, recovery point objective and recovery time objective uh, configurations, right? So uh, DB1 is sending archive logs and application into the physical standby in, in AZ2. So that covers our database server from a uh, HA point of view. HA point of view. But is there any other way you would recommend other than Oracle Data Guard for HA? Yeah. So on the other option on uh, the database side could be putting your entire database onto FSX uh, NetApp for ONTAP. With that, you get all the same capabilities that uh, customers had with NetApp on-premise. You get all the same NetApp ONTAP capabilities delivered to you as a service in AWS. And in fact, that is our go-forward reference architecture and recommendation to customers, is to leverage uh, FSX and NetApp on tap in AWS for large Oracle eBusiness Suite enterprise types of uh, workloads. And Good. Sorry. So when you are deploying with on tap, right, I, I'm assuming that the storage that you're going to use will be FSX on tap. But what about the storage that you're going to use when deploying with Oracle Data Guard? Yeah, so even with Data Guard, we'll leverage FSXN. Uh, we have numerous options in terms of storage, right? We can we can use GP3 if we wanted. Uh, we can use um, IO2, um, FSXN, as we've spoken. Uh, even with Data Guard, we can we can leverage any one of those storage options. It just depends again on the RPO and RTO. Mm -hmm. With FSX NetApp on tap, the advantage is uh, we can we can uh, mount all the file systems, the software, archive logs, everything on the NetApp, and then we can also use SnapMirror. Uh, capabilities here, along with the data guard capabilities we already talked about for the standby. Excellent. Now, is there a particular EC2 type instance that, that you recommend for running Oracle applications on AWS? So, AWS has numerous uh, instance types for customers to choose from, from memory optimized to storage optimized, etc. The, the way we determine the instance type and size and whatnot is based on looking at uh, CPU, memory, I/O, and throughput. Uh, so we were on AWR reports, we'll look at the uh, storage array uh, data, OS watcher data, et cetera, to come up with the right instance types for the database as well as the application server. But uh, we let the data from that drive what the capacity requirements are for the instance types we select in, in AWS. Yeah, that makes sense, right? On, also with Oracle applications, EV specifically, right? It also depends on the modules that you're specifically running, right? For example, if you're running financial, mm -hmm. then financial, is an IO hog. It mm -hmm. takes a lot of IO, right? So you would like to recommend an instance that has got a lot of IO throughput. If you're running modules like advanced supply chain planning that needs a lot of memory, you'd like to recommend an instance that has got more memory. Exactly, okay. exactly. That makes sense. Now let's move on to application tier, right? So what is the most common deployment pattern for application that tier that you see? What about HA for Oracle applications? Okay, so let's talk about the applications. So, Typically, uh, customers will have a single app server for all their applications and small and medium sized enterprise uh, customers and then large enterprise customers will have the multiple app servers. So typical design is to deploy app, app 2 in, in uh, AZ2. 
-hmm. So it gives us uh, resiliency, HA capabilities in the event of an AZ1 outage. Uh, LAP Server 2 is an AZ2. Now, uh, we share the same application file system from the NetApp ONTAP storage array, right? So even if you want to have a separate app server, let's say an a AZ, AZ1, uh, it's the same uh, file system that's shared. We do a shared Apple top in uh, eBusiness Suite, all mounted and served up from the uh, FSX NetApp for ONTAP. Okay. So basically, this file system also serves the purpose of a shared file system, right? Yes. That you need for application tier. Just making sure, if I understand correctly, you have you will have separate file system for database and application tier, right? You're not right. going to use the same file system because from this image, it looks like you are using the same file system. That is not the case. That is not the case. You will have separate file system. Correct, separate file system. Okay. Now, with AWS, what do you see common deploying? Where do you see common deploying, customers deploying the concurrent manager? Previously, if I remember, Customers used to deploy that on database tier, mm -hmm. and then there used to be some customers they used to have a separate server for concurrent manager. Mm -hmm. Do you see that same thing in AWS, or you see customers? What do you see? Yeah. So um, as you mentioned, we've done over 150 uh, e-business suite migrations and adoptions into AWS, right, from on-prem. All of those customers, we've put the concurrent managers on the applications tier. Mm -hmm. So if they used to be on the database tier, like if they're running uh, Solaris environments or Exa or AIX uh, power series servers and they put the concurrent managers on the DB tier. When we move it to AWS, we take the concurrent manager uh, workload and put it into the applications tier. Now, the reason for that is so that we can control uh, how much capacity and throughput and those types of things. So we can split these application servers up and make dedicated concurrent manager servers if we wanted to, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we can do concurrent manager nodes, et cetera. But typically what we do is we just split, spin up additional app servers, and then we control what their purpose is by just controlling the, uh, you know, the services based on the AD utility the Oracle provides, whether that server serves as the application server, uh, concurrent manager server, et cetera. Now, Mihir, when you have multiple application tiers, right? Say you have, say, two or three in an AZ1, you can have two or three in AZ2, you can have six, eight, depending on the sizing. How do you customers distribute the load across multiple EC2 servers for application tier? Do you recommend some kind of load balancer, mm -hmm. or how do you do that? Yeah, so uh, depending on the customer security requirements and whatnot, we have customers that using standard AWS load balancers, uh, from that to Cisco to F5, et cetera. So the business requirements for that customer and their security requirements uh, drives what load balancer we use. Now, if they don't have those standards and uh, strict requirements, a standard AWS load balancer works beautifully and still secure and uh, performant and uh, allowing us to uh, pass any uh, compliance and requirement product just by using a standard AWS load balancer. Perfect. Now we have covered the DB, we have covered the application tier, we have covered the load balancer, we have covered kind of covered the intact tech stack of Oracle application. What is the most common deployment pattern that you see customers deploying EBS on AWS? Or the most common reference architecture that you normally see? Okay, so then in terms of the applications tier, we typically see App Server 1, App Server 2 topology here. Database, we've already discussed, it's standard uh, database in AZ1, standby uh, in, in uh, AZ2 with whatever, depending on the business, business requirements for recovery po uh, point and recovery time objective in terms of how we do SNAP or data guard or whatnot. In terms of the applications tier, uh, we'll just split them out based on the workload and, and growth of that. A lot of times customers say, this is great, um, this meet, this is a better architecture than what we even had on-prem when we move it to AWS, but I'm still concerned about what happens in the event of an entire uh, region failure, right? So in that scenario, uh, the most cost-effective, efficient way to do that is with S3. So we take the applications, uh, back them up, take the database, do a backup, store it on S3, and then do uh, cross-region replication of that S3 bucket. Now, Mihir, you are, in this case, you are replicating everything to S3, but mm -hmm. if, say, you have very, got very stringent RTO and RPO, mm -hmm. and you, if you would try to restore it from S3 to, again, in different region, that will take some time. Is there a way that you can continuously replicate the data from application tier and database tier in a second AZ, so that if you have a very stringent RTO or RPO, you should be able to get up and running very quickly? Yeah, so not in a sec uh, AZ, second AZ is easy. We, we can move that entire, instead of this being an AZ2, we just take this entire thing and uh, deploy it into a separate region, US East and US West, for instance, right? So we can take our application server, the standby, everything is in a different region in, in AWS. So that gives us uh, true DR uh, in the event of a region outage in AWS, which 
rarely ever happens, right? But we have that ability to do that. Now, how do we do that? We can do, again, for the database, uh, this standby just happens to be in a different region. We do data guard, and we can do SnapMare uh, there as well. Applications tier-wise, uh, what we do is standard R syncs and um, you know uh, car copies, those types of things, uh, just like we would do on-prem um, from that uh, perspective. So it allows us to uh, accommodate for region failure as well. Thank you so much, Mihir. It was very enlightening for me. I learned a lot today from this video, and I hope our readers, you must have learned a lot from today's video. Thank you so much, Mihir. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Bye-bye.